I'm gonna try very hard to keep this intro as short and sweet as possible because we have a lot of stuff to get through today. Basically, I just love a bracket tournament, especially in anime, and I also love experimenting with JJK matchups and finding out who is the strongest. So what I've done is redesigned the culling games into a free-for-all single elimination bracket tournament. I created a list of all the culling games players, roughly ordered by strength, and then used a tournament bracket generator to determine everyone's matchups. Since JJK is very matchup dependent and it would take forever to cover every possible matchup, I decided that this was the easiest, most entertaining and fairest way to determine the true culling games champion. And while we're on the topic of fairness, I also want to quickly run through some rules before we get started. First of all, Gojo, Sukuna and Takaba will not be included in this bracket. Gojo and Sukuna is obvious because they're not actually culling game players at all. As for Takaba, it's just because I really don't know what the f*** to do with him. Like, he's such an anomaly to me and it would be so difficult to go through this and just try and figure out how the hell he's gonna lose. I genuinely think Kenjaku is the best possible matchup for him, and Kenjaku's not here, so I'm leaving him out. I can't be bothered to deal with that shit, it's just too much. Also, every character we will be discussing is the strongest version of themselves that we've seen. However, Kashimo's curse technique can only be used if he makes it to the finals because I said so. And also because he'll die if he uses it earlier, but that's not the point. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to clear up before starting round one. Uh, but you said you were gonna do a really short intro. Shut up. As you can see, through means of my very sophisticated bracket, I have decided that Yuta, Yorozu, Kashimo, Maki, Hikari, and Curse Naoya are the top six strongest, meaning that they all get a buy in the first round and make it straight to round two. Round one is basically about clearing out all of the useless fodder that you didn't even remember Member was in the series. And round one's matchups consist of Hazanoki vs. Dido, Angel vs. Rin, Yuji vs. Mio, Drov vs. Charles, Uro vs. Hari, Reggie vs. Noritoshi, Higuruma vs. Remy, Megami vs. Haba, Kororushi vs. Panda, and Ryu vs. Hanyu. And I know, there are so many names that you probably don't even recognize in that list, but the whole point of round one is for us to just very quickly go through and clear out all of the useless fodder. So let's get started and get round one very swiftly out of the way so we can move on to the more exciting fights. First off, we have Iori Hazanoki vs. Hagani Daido. Hazanoki is a a very dangerous member of Reggie's group who throws exploding body parts at his opponents. He has a very good understanding of reverse curse technique to recover the parts of his body that he throws and also has a very dangerous offensive ability, so he's going to be a hard one to beat. On the other hand, Dido, aka Katana Man, has no cursed energy, but it's very unclear whether this is via a heavenly restriction to the same level as Maki or simply a normal non-sorcerer who uses katanas and not cursed energy to fight. Since he doesn't really do anything that impressive, I'm going to assume that he doesn't have Maki's speed and strength, meaning I think Hazanoki wins this through sheer firepower. Next up, we have Hana Karusu, aka Angel, versus Rin Amai, aka Yuji's irrelevant school friend. Very simply put, Rin's just got nothing. The kid is straight ass. I think even without Jacob's ladder, Angel just lands one reinforced punch to his face, and that's it. Good night. So yeah, Angel goes to round two, easy clap. Next up, we got Yuji Itadori versus Roku Jushi Mio, aka Sumo Man. I also really hope I didn't f up that name too bad. Outside of Sumo, Yuji absolutely wipes the floor with Mio. But even if Yuji does agree to enter and participate in the Sumo domain, I still think he's got the strength to just just outright beat Mio in sumo. So yeah, Yuji's going to round two. After that, we've got Druv Luck Dawala versus Charles Bernard. And again, I really hope I said that name correctly. Right, I'm gonna make this very simple. Charles isn't gonna get anywhere near Druv before his domain Shikigami completely tear him a new asshole. To use Foresight, Charles has got to draw Druv's blood, but there's no way he's getting anywhere close enough to do that. So I'm just gonna give this one straight to Druv and let him advance to round two. Next up, we have Takako Uro versus Chizuru Hari. Hari is basically just a fodder member of Reggie's group with sharp claws. That's literally it. We already know that Uro is an incredibly powerful Heian era sorcerer with sky manipulation who is going to wipe the floor with this fodder. So yeah, easy round two for Uro. Next up, we have Reggie Star versus Norotoshi Kamo, which is a little bit more interesting. But look, Norotoshi, you're not Choso, okay? Realistically, Colin Games Megami would absolutely whoop your ass, and it took Megami everything except Maharaga to bring Reggie down. He can literally bring anything he has on a receipt into reality, allowing for surprise attacks and direct counters to Norotoshi Kamo's blood manipulation. So I really don't think he's got the facilities to deal with this man. Reggie Star goes round two. Next up, we've got Hiromi Higuruma versus Remy. Remy being the girl with the scorpion tail hair that lured Megami away to Reggie. Higuruma's judgment is going to find some reason to confiscate her technique, and then Higuruma is basically just going to beat the crap out of this helpless child with their big ass hammer. That's it, nothing more to it. So Higuruma very comfortably goes to round two, and I don't think anyone expected anything less from him. Anyway, after that, we've got Megami versus Haba, aka Helicopter Head. Now, remember this guy took one punch from Itadori and had a fing stroke, so best believe Megami absolutely no diffs him. All he needs to do is summon Nui and electrocute that massive metal propeller on his head, and he's done for. GG easy for Megami. Next up is Curse Spirit Kurarushi versus Panda, and Panda is so ass that he might need a separate video just for me to hate on him for a little bit because oh my 
God do I hate Panda. Kuroroshi was tanking hits from base Yuta and also hurt base Yuta in a 1v1. In fact, he was so strong that Ryo and Uro thought Yuta was screwed until he one-shot him with positive energy, something Panda's fat ass cannot do. Panda's unblockable drumming B is also totally blockable, and his sister core ain't gonna do shit against Kuroroshi, so the cockroach goes to round two easy peasy. Now for our final matchup in round one. Ryu Ishigori versus Hanyu, aka Jet Engine Head Lady. Whatever, the point is there's a jet on her head so she can fly really fast, that's about it. Look, it's so obvious, Ryu just blasts her with one massive granite blast and it's game over. GG, round two for Ryu. We're done. Okay, with round one finished, we move on to the already much harder round two, which will determine who makes it to the Culling Games quarterfinals. The matchups are as follows. Yuta Okotsu versus Iori Hazanoki, Angel versus Yuji Itadori, Maki Zenin versus Druv Lakdawala, Kinji Hakari versus Takaka Uro, Yorozu versus Reggie Star, Hiromi Higuruma versus Megami Fushiguro, Hajime Kashimo versus Kurarushi, and finally Curse Naoya versus Ryu Ishigori. So yeah, definitely a lot harder than round one. First up, we have Yuta Okotsu versus Iori Hazanoki, and all I have to say is unlucky Hazanoki. Like, someone's gotta face Yuta, and fortunately it just happened to be you. As cool and underrated as I think you are, you really don't stand a chance against the cursed child. You're gonna watch him walk through your explosion, like Gojo did to Jogo, before watching him command you to throw it back for the rest of time with his cursed speech. Easy advancement to quarterfinals from Okotu. Next up, we have Angel vs Yuji Itadori. Now, we are removing Sukuna from play, as we said, and we'll also be considering each character at the height of what they have shown us so far, meaning that Yuji does have his soul strikes, blood manipulation, and reverse curse technique. For someone who fights without a curse technique, Jacob's Ladder is not going to do shit against Yuji, meaning that he's going to basically just beat the crap out of her and move on with his day. Easy quarterfinals for Yuji. Next up, we've got Marky Zenin vs Druv Lakdawala. Now, let me tell you something about Druv, okay? This guy is a special grade pussy. Bro is like 270 years old, sitting on his ass and murdering civilians to get his points. When faced with a competent special grade like Yuta or Maki, he is getting absolutely cooked. Maki easily dispatches of those Shikigami and then takes Driv's head clean off just like Yuta did. Therefore, Maki Zenin easily advances to the quarterfinals. After that, we have got Kinji Hikari versus Takako Uro. And let's be real, Uro is hella strong and cool as fuck, but she has got a grand total of zero ways to kill Hikari. Base Yuta was straight up tanking thin icebreakers and Hikari's output in jackpot is probably similar to Yuta's, meaning a thin icebreaker is not gonna do shit to kill him. Hikari is simply gonna beat her down until she cannot fight anymore. Even in a domain clash, Hikari can still get a jackpot as long as the domains are actually clashing. So I think Hikari takes this absolutely no problem. I'm sorry, Uro, you're really cool, but Hikari goes quarterfinals. Then we have Yorozu versus Reggie Star, and Reggie, I'll be honest, you're screwed, mate. If Yorozu somehow doesn't close this out with only their insect armor, then her domain and perfect spear definitely will. A mid as fuck hollow wicker basket is not gonna save Reggie from Yorozu's overwhelming Heian era power. It's genuinely just too easy for her, she easily goes to quarterfinals, no question. After that, we have Hiromi Higuruma versus Megami Fushiguro, and I am very glad these guys ended up against each other, because this is a very interesting fight. Now let's assume that Megami has done something in his life, like, oh, I don't know, beating up all of the stoners at his old secondary school. Then he will beat Higuruma, even with his curse technique confiscated. Remember, even after the CT is confiscated, Higuruma's opponent can still fight with normal cursed energy. And due to his lack of combat experience, Higuruma will most definitely be royally touched up by Megami, even with his big hammer thing. However, if Judgment looks at the Shibuya incident, just as it did with Yuji, then Megami is gonna get the fastest death sentence ever given. Why is that, you ask? Well, it's because he summoned a monster that basically leveled half of the city. City. Having done absolutely zero research on the legal system, I've concluded that this would be Megami's fault since a pet owner is responsible for that pet. Yeah, that's my logic here. Just deal with it, okay? Despite Megami's close quarters combat skills, I don't think he's quite good enough to totally avoid any contact with the executioner's sword. However, as with any fight against Hegaruma, it's a very what if based scenario. So for the purpose of making the quarterfinals entertaining, I'm actually going to let Higuruma through since we already know that Megami will just get fried by Yorozu and I think Higuruma versus Yorozu is a much more interesting fight. Actually, that's a lie, I don't, but still, whatever. Next up, we've got Kashimo versus Kurarushi. Based off the fact that one granite blast was enough to cripple Kurarushi, I'ma say that he's cooked when Kashimo unleashes his can't-miss lightning attack right into the insect's crondolium. Kurarushi is not Hikari, he's not evading that shit. All Kashimo needs to do is live long enough to charge up one lightning attack and then it's GG's. With Kashimo advancing to the quarterfinals, we now arrive at the final fight of round two, Curse Noia versus Ryu Ishiguri. Now this one I found really hard to do and I have changed my mind many, many, many times 
times while making this video. Now, Oya is undoubtedly way faster than Ryu, despite Ryu's incredible reinforcement. Having tanked Yuta, Rikas, and his own attacks, though, he is definitely no joke durability-wise. When not charging up for a massive top speed attack, Curse Noya is actually less durable due to a binding vow, meaning Ryu definitely can exercise him with Granite Blast if he lands enough attacks. If Ryu does expand his undoubtedly very strong domain, and Naoya expands his own, they will clash, cancelling out the guaranteed hit. Ryu is a very experienced and strong sorcerer, and Curse Noya is literally just learning domain expansion right then and there. There is definitely an argument to be made about Ryu's domain outright winning against Naoya's, although I really don't think that's going to happen. Within the domains, if they're clashing, I also think Noya still has the advantage because he can just move much faster than Ryu. However, if they both get destroyed at the same time, Ryu wins due to his maintained output. But look, considering how either side can win, I will basically just decide based off looking at each of their feats in more detail. Noritoshi Kamo's mid as f blood manipulation was enough to save him from Noya's attack, and whenever he isn't at top speed, Noya is weak enough to be damaged by Noritoshi's blood. Meanwhile, Ryu Ishigori threw hands with base Yuta and tanked hits from fully manifested Rika. Not to mention that Ryu's basic attacks are so strong that they literally both sent Yuta and Rika flying at one point in that fight. Tsukuna even compared Yuta and Yuji's durability directly to Ryu Ishigori. So given all of this information, I'ma conclude that Ryu has the necessary durability, attack potency, and domain to defeat Curse Naoya, although I think it is an incredibly close fight, and you can definitely make an argument for Noia winning. I also really hate saying the word Naoya. It's so hard to fit into a sentence. Like, it's just such a difficult word to say. Now we are moving on to the quarterfinals where shit gets even harder. The quarterfinal matchups are as follows. Yuta Okotu versus Yuji Itadori, Maki Zenin versus Kinji Hakari, Yorozu versus Hiromi Higuruma, and finally Hajime Kashimo versus Ryu Ishigori. And yeah, there are definitely some interesting possibilities here, so let's get straight into it. First of all, we have Yuta Okotu versus Yuji Itadori, a fight we have kind of seen before, but this time it's going to be very different. Both Yuta and Yuji have shown us a lot more since Shibuya, what with Yuta's domain expansion and updated arsenal of techniques, as well as Yuji's soul strikes, blood manipulation, and reverse curse technique. In terms of basic attacks, Yuta has already shown that he can hit hard enough to hurt Yuji, and similarly, Yuji can bypass Yuta's reinforcement to a degree in order to strike the soul directly. Yuta Okotsu has also not been shown capable of healing the soul via reverse curse technique, although it is unclear whether Yuji's soul strikes extend to his blood manipulation, which it may not, and in that case reverse curse technique will still help Yuta. Given their raw strength, I I believe Yuta and Rika together can physically overpower Yuji. But to be honest, the real endgame here is simply that Yuji has no counter to Yuta's busted ass domain expansion. Given Yuta's huge arsenal, he is more than powerful and versatile enough to defeat any version of Yuji we have seen. Therefore, Yuta Okotsu will advance to the semis and eliminate the main character from the culling games. Next up is a fight that I honestly really just don't give a shit about. Kinji Hikari versus Maki Zenin. I'm gonna get some serious backlash for this one because I think this fight is just boring as fuck. In terms of speed and strength, Hikari is probably more than capable of throwing hands with Maki. By the very nature of Hikari's domain expansion, it also doesn't matter if Maki gets caught in it or not. If we just look at it in terms of throwing hands, I think it's a very long and exhausting stalemate, and for that reason, I'm actually going to consider the soul split katana and then give an easy win to Maki. Just like for Yuta, there is absolutely no evidence at all that suggests Hikari can heal the soul via his automatic reverse curse technique. And for that reason alone, I think Maki mid-diffs Hikari with soul split katana. If you disagree, then cool, but the video would be pretty ass if I didn't select a winner, and so Maki advanced is simply because of the ability to hurt Hikari's soul. Next up, we have Yorozu versus Higuruma. Now, straight off the bat, let's assume that Higuruma does manage to get confiscation and the death penalty for Yorozu. He is still gonna get low diffed in a 1v1. Yorozu is a Heian era sorcerer with immense knowledge and cursed energy who threw hands against some of the strongest ever. With nothing but pure cursed energy reinforcement, she will dodge and weave that sword before deleting Higuruma from existence. He literally says himself that lack of combat experience is his biggest weakness, so Yorozu absolutely destroys him and advances straight to the semi-finals. Finally, we have Hajime Kashimo versus Ryu Ishiguri. Now, this one is a really great matchup since they are both said to be two of the strongest in their shared era. However, Kashimo was the undeniable strongest farmer who literally waved off Kenjaku's suggestion of fighting Ryu because it would be a waste of time. Putting Kashimo's ego aside, however, I do think Ryu has a slightly better chance than most people give him credit for. Hikari and Ryu's reinforcement is probably somewhat similar, so Ryu can definitely keep up with base Kashimo and ignore his cursed energy trait the same way Hikari did. Now, Kashimo is probably faster, but lacks any real impressive defensive feats. So if he does get hit by a Granite Blast, then it might do some serious damage to him, and we haven't seen Kashimo use Reverse Curse Technique, so I'm not sure that he actually can. However, Kashimo is almost definitely too fast and clever to be directly hit by a full power Granite Blast in a 1v1. What's much more likely is he one-shots Ryu with a massive Lightning Blast straight to the Crondolium, just like he did with Hikari. Except, obviously, Ryu is not going to come back from this one. Kashimo also has Hollow Wicker Basket for a domain counter, so no matter 
matter how you look at it, Kashimo almost definitely wins against Ryu Ishigori. So unfortunately for you Ryu fans, it will be Kashimo advancing to the semi-finals. Now only four contestants remain in our bracket, and as expected, they are all strong as hell, so let's get straight into selecting our finalists. The matchups for the semi-finals are Yuta Okotsu versus Maki Zenin, and Yorozu versus Hajime Kashimo. We're gonna start with Yuta Okotsu versus Maki Zenin though. Unlike Hikari, Yuta is not simply a punch and kick merchant. He has cursed energy second only to Sukuna, allowing for incredible speed, strength, and durability. Now against Maki, a domain expansion is completely pointless, and he is vulnerable to soul attacks the same way as Hikari. So it's definitely not a one-sided fight. Maki's presence is also very hard to track, and her speed is probably faster than Yuta to be honest, although not by enough to make her be able to blitz him in any capacity. I think Yuta and Rika will trade blows and avoid the soul split katana at all costs. I also think that Yuta will connect to Rika in order to access his arsenal of cursed techniques. The key ones here being Foresight and Cleave, both of which we know that he has. All he needs to do is draw a little bit of blood from Maki which will allow him to predict her movements, and this will make her speed much less problematic than it otherwise would have been. Once he identifies a good opening, he will use Cleave to totally shred up Maki's face, and that will be the end of it. Realistically though, there are so many ways that this fight could go, and this is just one example that I've given. I don't really like going into the hypotheticals in too much detail. The point is, I think Yuta does win against Maki. We then have Yorozu versus Kashimo, and I can already smell the angry farmer glazers freaking out in the comment section. I think Kashimo gets absolutely railed by Yorozu. Now you're very lucky you've caught me in a good mood because I was half tempted to just not explain this and move straight on. Yorozu is literally a perfect counter to Kashimo. Construction as a curse technique literally means that she can expend more curse energy to protect herself with an insulator material as opposed to her normal metal. Being one of the strongest in the Heian era and having incredible mastery of cursed energy makes for a more than worthy opponent for Kashimo, especially given her ability to insulate herself. Kashimo will effectively be rendered a literal farmer with nothing but hollow wicker basket to defend him from Yorozu's OP domain and perfect sphere. She will remain protected from his electricity and then eventually wear down his hollow wicker basket and then delete him from existence. End of story, Kashimo gets cooked. I mean, I know I said I wasn't going to let him use his CT, but I've got to be honest, even if he did use his CT, I still think Yorozu can win that. And that's mainly because I think Kashimo's curse technique is so overrated and just straight ass compared to what I thought it was going to be. So now we have our grand finalists, the curse child Yuta Okotsu and the Heian era monster Yorozu. Now, this one is genuinely so close because I consider them both among the top 5 strongest JJK characters. However, only one of them can take home the title of the Culling Game Champion. Yuta Okotsu has the cursed energy, reverse curse technique, and genius to comfortably throw hands with Heian era sorcerers. Yorozu is a particularly skilled one though, who would obliterate any of Yuta's Sendai opponents. Yorozu's armor will allow her to comfortably compete with both Rika and Yuta in speed, strength, and durability, although a 2v1 is still very tough, especially when it involves the Queen of Curses. As shown with Gojo vs Sukuna, when it comes down to sorcerers of this higher level, everything comes down to the pinnacle of jujitsu, domain expansion. Considering the fact that this is Yuta Okotsu we're talking about, with a domain so sophisticated it even impressed Sukuna, I think it's safe to say that they would probably tie up and clash just like Sukuna and Gojo did. This would effectively cancel the guaranteed hit of both domains, which I believe puts Yorozu at a pretty significant disadvantage. In my incredibly professional opinion, Yorozu's perfect sphere would absolutely obliterate Yuta and Rika. However, with Yuta's own domain cancelling out the guaranteed hit of Yorozu's domain, it means he can very easily avoid the sphere since it moves at a moderate speed without the guaranteed hit. Yuta's domain also comes with a way to still be hella OP even without a can't miss attack, so he can just keep on attacking with the sword's copied abilities. Now don't get me wrong, Yorozu can still use her technique to attack as well, it just won't have a guaranteed hit. But now Yuta has unlimited use of his copy techniques to pile on some deadly attacks, and I don't think Yorozu has enough to deal with it. If he managed to locate a sword containing cleave, angels technique or Drub Shikigami, then it's probably a wrap for Yorozu considering all of these attacks damage Sukuna to a very decent extent. And even at half strength, Sukuna would still be way stronger than Yorozu, so these attacks will definitely damage her. Now Yorozu is hella skilled, but with Yuta and Rika together, she won't be able to avoid their attacks forever. Now I've decided to be very nice and throw Yorozu a bone. Let's assume that both of them do enough damage for their domains to completely fail. Well, Yuta can then connect to Rika, which will replenish his cursed energy, quicken his cursed technique's recovery, and allow for a massive output beam. It would be an incredible fight to witness, but overall I think Yuta just
just has way more power and versatility. Yorozu's skill should definitely not be understated, although I do think Yuta would win this fight with Rika. I think Yorozu should definitely get credit for their insane skill, and if I was judging this based off the Yuta Okotsu before seeing his domain expansion, I think she would have won it. But after seeing his crazy ass domain expansion, I am giving the win to Yuta Okotsu. So it's with the utmost smugness and satisfaction that I, the strongest Yuta Glazer in history, declare Yuta Okotsu the official Culling Games champion. Shout out Yorozu though for being a more than worthy second place. I declare thee the killer of farmers. Congratulations. Now I know, this video is very different and a lot longer than usual, but I really love the idea so much that I had to see it through to the end. I genuinely really enjoyed making this video and I really hope you enjoy it as much as I did. I already know that a video like this is going to receive a lot of criticism and negative comments, but I really don't care. In fact, I encourage you to comment your opinion, especially if you disagree with me because I will never take it personally and I just really enjoy seeing a good variety of opinions. I also have made a Twitter slash X account, so please go drop me a follow. The link to that Twitter and my TikTok is in the description below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.